What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to part two of Pele in Football Manager. Yes, we are back here with the series and uh, well as you can see here it's part two. If you missed part one of course do go check it out. Uh, Pele, 22 years old now and well he is in the blue of PSG. Yes, he moved to PSG in the summer from Inter which we expected to happen for that £116 million fee. You can see eight goals, two assists and two player of the matches so far far in those games he's done he's done pretty well for them all things considering you know he, he's made that move now he's moved over you can see Inter was one of his favorite clubs of course he did achieve a lot there but kind of that was all just part of the stepping stone it feels like in this kind of new team that he's gone to where as you can see he's playing a hell of a lot of matches for them and he's also starting to play a little bit more as a striker which is interesting to see one thing that I didn't show last time that I want to show quickly here is his injuries. Uh, I didn't cover them last time out, but actually you can see here he's had a lot of these shorter term injuries. Nothing too major, I think, long term wise. Five weeks, the longest he's been out for with sprained knee ligaments at the start of this calendar year. He did actually get that, then ha hit him again, which might explain why Inter struggled so much in that last season that we covered last time out. You might have noticed in the top right, the date is December 19th, 2022. It's the day after the first World Cup final. So that's where we're going to pick things off here. Uh, as you can see, Pelé now 27 appearances for Brazil. The Brazil team who made it to the World Cup final but did not win it. No, they lost in the final on penalties against Germany. Let's take a look at this game if we can in some detail. If it decides to load. But yes, Pelé at the World Cup. Uh, you can see here, he did not even get to take a penalty in the shootout. He was taken off after 27 minutes. I'm not entirely sure why. The player who replaced him was Maicon, who's a more defensive centre mid. So I wonder if that was a complete... Oh, actually, I see now. Fabinho got sent off. That makes a lot more sense. But yes, you can see here, Fabinho sent off. Brazil managed to hold on, but Pele was sacrificed in that game. And his sacrifice, well, it, it was in vain, wasn't it? It was not worth it at the end of the day. If we just look at Brazil's route through to the final, of course, this isn't a video covering the World Cup itself, um, so we're not going to go through this in too much detail, but you can see they beat Japan 6-1. Pelé did get a goal in that game. They then beat Serbia in Group F, which probably guaranteed them a spot through anyway. They then actually lost, as you can see here, 1-0 against the Netherlands in their last group stage game. From there, they actually relied on extra time and penalties against both Uruguay and Italy. Italy, who they beat. You can see here uh, a late, late, late penalty by Neymar in the 90th plus five minute. I mean, they've got rescued from the death twice in this game. Two goals in extra time took the game all the way to penalties. Pele stepped up. He scored the first penalty for them. Uh, you can see in this game, he did also get an assist. Didn't have the best game, actually, but um, he did see Italy through, well, Italy out and Brazil through in that game. That was looks like it was an absolutely crazy match, but yeah, very absent from the goal scoring charts, which is interesting. If we just look at the team stats here, you can see Brazil did score the most goals out of all the teams. However, if we look, well, if we look at the player overview here, you can see Pele's Pele's name not here. Didn't it didn't appear anywhere in terms of top goal scorers. Uh, you can see Bobby Firmino and Thomas Muller leading the way, joint top on five. Um, so yeah, Firmino, the main goal scoring threat. Most key passes, to be fair, was Pele with 13, but he only managed three assists. He played six games. You can see a 75% pass completion um, kind of percentage. And uh, well, in terms of assist, insanely led the way on five. Pele a little bit off the pace down at three. But regardless, not a terrible World Cup. Losing in the final, perhaps a little bit heartbreaking, especially the way it happened, where he couldn't quite make things happen. And carry the team through. Obviously, he's now gone to PSG for that crazy, crazy sum of money. You can see here, 160 million pounds. Another thing that we didn't cover last year was the FIFA kind of best player of the year. You can see he's not won it yet. Um, this, of course, kind of the uh, the best player of the year. And then in terms of the Ballon d'Or again, didn't even get in the runner-up last year, and he hasn't actually appeared looking at it at all so far. So yeah, no Ballon d'Or for Pele. Maybe now though, moving to uh, PSG, this is going to be his chance to really show us what he's made of. You can see he's been appearing in the team of the week, week in and week out. That runner-up in the Brazil um, kind of 
national team is going to sting a little bit. Of course, the next World Cup three and a half years away. Uh, and well, speaking of that, I think we'll go forward three years or two and a half years to the end of the 2025 season. See how Pelé's getting on. You know, he will be a little bit more established. He's going to be entering his prime now around the age of 25. It will be interesting to see if, you know, he gets bored of being at PSG and winning anything, everything, or if he kind of sticks it out like the likes of Neymar and Mbappe have previously. Okay, guys, so we've gone forward to 2025. Those of you paying attention, you passed the test if you went down in the comments and complained about the fact I said we were going three and a half years and then we were going to 2025. Of course, it's only been two and a half years since you were last here. Um, but yeah, looking at him here, Pele just still looks absolutely nutty. Edging ever so close now, you can see here, to the 47 caps. And, uh, well, 34 goals to his name as well. A monumental return, really. You can see over the last few seasons, he's just got better and better. Actually looks like he missed a fair bit of football uh, in the second half of that season that we saw. Let's have a look. In terms of major injuries, yeah, look, a hip injury here after the World Cup. He was out for two months with that. Quite a serious injury, really. But he's bounced back okay since then. You can see uh, last season, he got 23 goals and 13 assists. Uh, in 38 matches. The first time in his career, actually, you can see here he averaged above an 8.0 rating. This year just gone at 22 goals, 17 assists, so adding even more assists to his repertoire. Nine man of the matches, the highest that he's had um, during his time at, well, any club ever. You can see just looking at, well, the big earners here. Mbappe and Neymar, both still at the club alongside Pelé. So um, I expect here, and I've not checked yet, but I expected Pelé to have won a lot of things. You can see here, Mbappe actually considered the key player. If we look at Mbappe, his current ability is 195. Where does Pelé's line up in relation to that? I'm kind of curious to see. You can see Pelé actually just maxed out at 200, so he's actually the better player. I think that will be down to reputation then that Mbappe is higher. But let's have a look at the milestones. What has he won? What competitions has he, he done well in? And actually looking at it here, he, he's done a lot since that last World Cup where he was runners-up. So they won League uh, Not entirely surprising. They won the Champions League. So yes, he has got his hands on that. He got, uh, got his hands on it as well in that 2023 year where he was injured. Let's have a look at the Champions League here. You can see actually they won it two years in a row, which is, well, rather impressive. Um... In terms of uh, who finished runners-up in those other years, let's have a look here. You can see actually it was Man City two years in a row. Um, at Old Trafford, PSG won it. And then the following year, they won it in Russia. So, yes, Pelé winning a lot of stuff here at PSG. You have to wonder, is he just going to get bored or is he just going to want to win it all easily? They, of course, won the Club World Cup off the back of that Champions League win and the Europa or UEFA Super Cup. Uh, beyond that, of course, they, they won the Champions League again in 2024. Brazil actually finished, you can see here, in the Sudo America, Copa America. I, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with South American international football. But um, they finished third in that, which is actually probably an underperformance, really. That was last summer, I believe, if we just take a look. Uh, yeah, you can see here they lost to Argentina in the semi-final 1-0. Uh, they did beat Paraguay, but that's not really any consolation, is it? In terms of their World Cup qualifying campaign for the World Cup, which is going to be going on, uh, well, in a, in a year's time. Let's have a look. You can see here Brazil already qualified. Wow, that is crazy. 37 points from 14 games, only one loss in that time. That is Kind of nutty. You can see here Pele, 11 goals to his name. An average rating of 8.09, the highest in the competition. Neymar in second as well. Lucas Piquetta, also playing for PSG, got the most assists. So it seems like PSG hoarding, uh, well, a golden generation of Brazilian players, which has been spearheaded by Pele. And actually, you can see here with his move now to PSG, his reputation's gone up enough that he is now considered one of the top players at the team. Anyway, let's have a look through some of the more milestones that he's achieved more recently. Um, it looks like they've just won League uh, three years in a row. Not entirely surprising for PSG, given how good they are. In terms of awards, you can see here, won Best Player in Europe. Let's have a look at the past winners for this. It's his first year winning it. He's beaten Mbappe to it, which is not a bad achievement at all. Uh, did he win European Golden Boy? He did, actually, in 2019. You can see there that, of course, when he was back at Inter. Not got the golden shoe. You can see Mbappe, the real goal-scoring threat, it seems, uh, in this team. If we just look at his uh, form, uh, we can see actually this year he's been consistently played as a centre-attacking mid. Although he's actually also played 
as a centre mid, and I did notice, you can see here, he's starting to get trained as a centre mid, which is kind of curious. I guess that makes sense in teams uh, where he might not necessarily play centre attacking mid, maybe gives him a few more options. Um, but yeah, right now, I would don't see any reason why you'd ever play him at centre mid. He's just too good going forward to be played in that deeper role. You can see he's actually been given a few new player traits. He had gets further uh, forward whenever possible quite early on in his career, but he's got a few more more recently. And uh, while he's still tearing things up at PSG, he's still got four years left on his contract as well. So I don't think he's going to leave the club in the near future. Uh, in terms of other milestones, obviously we've looked through some of the awards here. Um, if we look at his biography, this will probably give us a better idea. You can see, of course, he started his career at Santos where he made those 31 league appearances. He then went to Inter where he won Serie A three times. He won, obviously, all kinds of cup competitions there as well. He moved to PSG where he's made 101 appearances so far. He's won the league a number of years in a row. The Champions League twice, the World Club Championship twice. You can see, in terms of individual awards, he got the Copa America Golden Boot runner-up twice. French Champions Trophy Best Player on three occasions. Most assists uh, in the competition on three occasions as well. You can see here, all three years he's been pipped to it by a, a Monaco player, which is kind of amusing to see. Um, but yeah, he did very well. You can see this most recent year, 22 goals, 17 assists. That is crazy. In terms of most goals, I assume there's an award for most goals. There's got to be an award for most goals. Top, top goal scorer, Jack. There it is. Yeah, you can see here, um, he's actually finished runner-up behind Mbappe the last two years, which is kind of unfortunate, the fact that he's in the same team as Mbappe, who's got 32 goals last season. You have to imagine a lot of those assisted by Pelé, who really has been doing work. Anyway, guys, to round up this episode, we're going to go forward until September 2026, and uh, we'll see how Brazil got on in their second World Cup. Is there going to be any retribution for Pelé? Is he still going to be at PSG in a year's time? Let's find out. Okay, guys, so we are back for the final time this episode. It's 2026. A second World Cup has been played, but that is not what's going to jump out at your screen. No. Pelé's at Manchester United. He hasn't taken a wage rise. He has just gone there of his own accord. Maybe he got bored of winning everything. But yes, he transferred this summer for £143 million. An absolutely crazy sum of money. If we just put that in context of kind of world football, uh, if, if if the game wants to load things. I don't want the induction. I want to look at the world page. Uh, let's, let's have a look. So in terms of transfers and then leading transfers, that's got to put him up there as one of the most expensive players ever. You can see here, actually, uh, Lotaro Martinez, of course, the, the former man of Inter at the same time as Pele actually moved to Man City for 204 million. Pele, runner up, but by quite a considerable margin, 143 million pounds, though, a crazy sum of money paid for him. And so far, six goals, three assists, two player of the matches. You can see in his last season at PSG, he got 15 goals and 13 assists and an 8.06 average rating, which was his highest at the club. If we look at milestones here, Obviously, he became that record transfer for both Manchester United and record sale for PSG. Uh, he finished uh, third place in midfielder of the season. Looks like they didn't get another Champions League, unfortunately, in that last year. He was named in the Brazil seasonal best 11, but I cannot see anything about the World Cups. So that can only mean one thing, and that is that the World Cup did not go to plan. Yes, you can see here, they lost in the quarter final. That is massively, massively disappointed. You can see Pele actually got a hat-trick in the first game against Turkey. They then lost to Australia 3-2. Australia too strong, it seems like. You can see uh, Andrew Scott, uh, Italiano and Kenneth Dougal with the goals. Are any of these real players? Dougal's actually a real player. I mean, to be fair, he's a bit better than Pele, so I can understand him scoring. Uh, Ecuador, they beat 3-0. Pele scored again in that one. But you can see here, um, they, they kind of won that for second round. They then won the third round. Of course, I, ju I just realised this is the new World Cup format, of course, with the uh, more teams entered. So there's only two group stage games. They then beat Belgium, but they lost to France in the quarter final. Can we look at the summary of this game? We can. So you can see here, they were just outclassed. Pelé just didn't get going, really, and neither did anyone in the team. So a pretty disappointing kind of... World Cup, you'd have to say. I was, I was hoping he could build off that runner-up last time out. I mean, I'm disappointed for him. 
But yeah, just not good enough really. It's going to be interesting to see now how he gets on at Manchester United. Um, you can see they won the Community Shield last year. Just looking at it, he is considered their key player. They've won the Premier League the last two seasons. You can see here Liverpool won it the year before that. In terms of average ratings, he's not top yet. This Brazilian regen is Robson Rodriguez. I mean, holy crap. How? Let's have a look. What's his current ability? 197. I mean, it's not far off Pele's at all. He's only 23 years old. Him and Pele are going to be having fun internationally. That makes it even more surprising in a lot of ways that they didn't lift the World Cup, doesn't it? But yeah, so far for Man City, not the great, uh, for Man United, not the best start. They are trailing Man City, but it'll be interesting to see next time out how Pele gets on. And uh, well, hopefully I will see you guys for that one. Um, that is going to be all from this ep from this episode from me, guys. Let me know how do you think Pele is going to get on next time out at Manchester United? Is he going to stick it out there at the age of 25? Now he's really going to be hitting his prime, expecting to win silverware. He's only really realistically got maybe two at a real push three World Cups to try and uh, get a World Cup win. Could be very difficult for him to now match Pele's record in real life, but we'll see how he gets on. And uh, yeah, well, hopefully I see you guys in the next one. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you've got any legends you'd like to see me do in the future, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.